Canadian Pete, and this is Evercade, my worst games ever. Yes, a brand new series in which I'm going to play some of my games I just can't stand on the Evercade, and maybe give you a little bit of, you know, knowledge on whether you want to play these games, or tell me why I made a mistake, or I am not actually true in my opinions on why I find these games absolutely the worst. And it wouldn't be the start of a new series on the Ever Canadian without me talking about a game that will rile up everybody. It will make everybody angry because this is a darling of the 90s, this game. This game has, on average, 7 out of 10 reviews uh, back in its era in the mid-90s, and it actually spawned quite a few sequels. Now, we're only going to talk about the first game. We're going to talk about Earthworm Jim. And I've been vocal on multiple channels on the Evercast. My disdain for this game. I know I am a sw salmon swimming upstream. I'm going against the tide. But you know what? Is this game that bad? Is that game as bad as I like to talk about it being bad? We're going to talk about that now. Because there are some redeeming qualities. And I sat down and I gave it another go. In 2022, I sat down on the Evercade, plugged that Interplay collection in, and I'm like, I gotta give it a go. Is it really that bad? Let's talk about it. What is Earthworm Jim? This is the story of Earthworm Jim video game. In outer space, a sweet evil cyborg belongs to Queen Cyberspace suit. Well, it smooshes. Why not slimy Earthworm Jim? He becomes a superpowered hero. He takes out that precious dog. Then that stupid worm goes onto the planet. He even tries mucus spongy jumping. And if that doesn't stop him, maybe the battle with Queen Festering Sweaty Slug for a butt will. Earthworm Jim Rumblemates. Okay, Earthworm Jim is a side scrolling game from 1994 from Shiny Entertainment. And you know what? It was published by Interplay. Yes, Interplay. They published quite a few games back in the day on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. This, of course, was out on the Sega Genesis, the Mega Drive, and it was one of the games that it really put the Genesis on the map in a lot of ways. And it spawned a bunch of sequels, but we're only talking about the first one. Again, this game has kind of this cult following of people who played it and loved it and it's really something to kind of hear about this game and when you play it for the first time it's a hit or miss for a lot of people out there but it did get good reviews so we don't want to dismiss that so for me like i said i took it i put it in the inter uh, in put in the interplay collection and i played this game again i wanted to see where the magic was and you know what i couldn't really find it it was lost on me, and this game's, you know, the, the, there's a little bit of controversy in today's world about this game, just because one of the creators who, who's a complete douche, uh, won't go into that, but uh, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about it. We're gonna, we're just gonna focus on the game itself, not about the creators and all the people behind it, because this game came out in 1994 and it resonated. But I'm playing it. I played it back in the day. I didn't own it, but I played it on other people's system and I played it when I came out on the Evercade. I kept trying to play this game over the years, and I, it, I think it sucks. So let's see, after spending more time with it, is there anything redeeming about it? Do I want to go back and play it again? All right, we're gonna talk about the pros first. The humor is kind of a pro, but I find it's, it's of its time. You know, I, I think some of the jokes with the cow and stuff like that, it hit probably in the mid 90s. It's still kind of funny, I guess. Some people can still find it funny, but it's known for its humor. I did enjoy the boss battles in this game. They weren't bad. I had a little bit of fun playing them. Uh, there's a little bit of variety. It's the standard boss battles of its time, though. I like the fact that also in between levels, you have to kind of do a fly through space. And if you can win that race, you don't have to do a mini fight against the next boss. So there was some interesting things going on with the bosses, but I found them again very overtuned sometimes and a lot of times on some of the harder difficulties they're just almost impossible so but you know it is a bit of a pro it was a unique uh, take on on their boss battle so i did enjoy that i gotta say the animation of the character is pretty dope i actually do like it i do prefer aladdin over that 
but I do I do appreciate what they did with a worm and a robotic suit. That's pretty cool. Soundtrack is solid. I really like the uh, the influence. I don't know if this, this is actually correct or not, but I think the music was influenced by a lot of bluegrass music, a lot of you know southern music, and, and it's pretty cool because you don't see that a lot in video games. And again, the character is unique. But that's all I kind of found that I liked about it. And that's sad, considering this game, like I said, got between 7 and 8.5 and out of 10 back in the day from tons of different magazines and reviewers. So, you know, that for me was kind of disappointing. Okay, let's get into this. Okay, the level design of this game, this is going to get really, this is just, again, my opinion, but the level design's pretty crappy in there. You get lost a lot of times. You don't know what edge to jump on, which ones you can hook on to. I find some of the jumps are kind of, they're kind of cheating you a little bit. Like you think you can make it, there's spikes. It's like, I, and it goes back to the art a little bit too. I think the art and the level design are kind of fighting against each other a bit. Um, jumping is not great in this game. I don't appreciate the jumping. It's not precise. It, it Overall, it doesn't have the same overall feel of games like Mario, Sonic, even Bonk, the era of the time with all those big mascots. This one falls really, really short in a lot of the level design, the character design, and the character movement. Um, I, I think the character design though, you could, you know, if you like a worm in a robotic suit more than Mario, hey, go for it. But, you know, for me, it's it's not my jam. But yeah, it falls short in, in the critical parts of gameplay. It really falls short. You do have a weapon, you do have a gun, but it doesn't really, you, when you switch out your weapons, it kind of, it doesn't feel like you're, you're in control which weapon you want to do, what type of blaster you got, and stuff like that. I do appreciate you flinging yourself and using that, but once you get the gun, I mean, that's the mechanic you use outside of, you know, flicking your body and using it as like a rope like you do in a pitfall game and stuff like that. I guess not a rope, it's your body, but, you know. Also, what's with the respawning in this game? When you get a continue halfway through the level and you get your continue point and you die, you respawn and you're, you're, you're immediately ganked by dogs or crows. It is ridiculous. Like, why? Why? It's artificially difficult for no freaking reason. You know, hit detection sucks on this game. The camera. Okay, let's talk about the camera. You're positioned forward in the camera view, so you can't really see what's in front of you a lot. They just needed to move that character back towards, if you're looking at the screen, the left side of the screen, not so forward towards the right. Forward, because you can't, you don't have enough time to adjust to what's in front of you. Again, I think it's very, but first of all, it's over design. I think there was a lot of good ideas put in this game and executed at my, in my opinion, really crappily and, you know, all in all, the package, if I had to score this game now, I'd give it a five and a half out of ten. To be honest with you, it's playable. It's just playable, but I think it's remembered as a much greater game than it actually is. And that's nostalgia. And, and I guess that's okay. But for me, this is one of the worst games on the Evercade. Maybe you like it. Let me know in the comments. I expect to get, you know, tons of comments saying I'm like, what are you smoking, Pete, or whatever. But nothing, because I don't smoke. But, <laughs> yeah. For So, you know, for me, this is... I had to start this series off with Earthworm Jim, because I've been very vocal about this game. And I, you know, will I go back and play? You know, I put a couple hours into this game. I've made it through that, you know, there's, there's, I think, 10 to 12 levels in this game. I've made it pretty far, but it just just don't enjoy it. it it felt like a chore once again i and pete thank you for checking out the channel bye everyone